I am Tabitha Pittman. I am going to be one, I am one of the instructors rather, here at Pearls of Excellence. I also have my own band. Um, thank you, uh, Prophetess Tara, for this great platform. And so I'll be leading a discussion today regarding um, loving on your husbands. So um, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them at the end. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about myself. And um, yeah, so I am a um, life coach and I have been doing that for almost two years now. I'm also an HR professional and um, but most of all what qualifies me to talk today about loving on your husband is the fact that I've been married for eight years I have three beautiful children and I uh, yeah I my life goal is just to be a help me to my husband um, as much as possible and of course serving Jesus um, in doing all of that as a posture of submission to Christ and then unto my husband. So, um, again, thank you so much for spending some time with me and, um, I'll get right to it. So the first thing that I believe, um, is one of the best and most critical ways that we can love on our husbands is to keep him lifted in prayer. Um, how many of you know that the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much? And so with all of that being said, um, prayer is a powerful tool. We know that as intercessors and, and uh, prayer warriors, prophetesses, uh, prophets, um, we know that that is a tool that we use to communicate with God. And in doing so, we build a stronger faith and then a stronger marriage. Um, one of the things that prayer also does is it softens our heart toward the people that we are praying for and namely in this uh, circumstance that would be our husband so um and it you know one of the other things that as a wife um it's difficult for us to continue to be mad at someone that you're praying for um i don't have a scripture to base that on but um as God continues to soften your heart toward that person, it also turns a reflective light. Um, it helps you to examine yourself. Um, so that is one of the things that prayer just supernaturally does in a situation. It makes a world of difference and you know that it's working. Um, so praying for your husband is critical. Um, you might be the only person in his life who is praying for him. So don't take it lightly that, um, you are afforded the opportunity and um, the, the privilege of praying for your husband. So um, another thing that we can do is to be his biggest encourager um, or his biggest cheerleader and versus being his biggest critic, right? So I think it is so important that we have harmony in our relationship. Um, how can two walk together unless they have an agreement? So that is unity inside of the marriage, inside of the relationship. And that also promotes being patient. So being his cheerleader, you have patience with him. You are building him up. You are lifting him up to God. Um, and you're, you know, you're as followers of Christ, we're saying, Hey, I want you to be encouraged. Um, I think another one word for me is the tone. So I'm a big person who is, um, I'm big on the tone. So I believe that it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So um, the tone of your words also shapes the encouragement, right? So you can say, good job. Or you can say, you did a great job, babe. I'm so thankful for you. And that is going to convey something completely different to him. Um, it's... That encouragement has the power to fuel his passions and that keeps him lifted up. That keeps him motivated. That keeps him pushing and driving toward the excellence, right? Of course he has his own self um, motivation, but you want to be another source to be pushing him forward, um, toward his thrust. Um, so your criticism obviously can take the 
the wind from beneath his wings, so to speak. If you uh, want to quote the song, you are the wind beneath my wings, your criticism will basically deflate him. And so we want to stay as far away from that as possible. Men have enough struggles that they're dealing with on a regular basis that we, we need to be their help meet. We need to be, you know, a, a, a safe place for them to run to. Um, so your, your encouragement will always bring out the best in your husband. Um, the next thing I want to, uh, give as a pointer is to, um, it may not sound like it, but be the initiator of sex. Um, I know we, I believe we are all grown on here. So, um, it is, I think, critical for men, especially, um, once they reach a certain age, so I'm a woman of a certain age. And so, um, it's okay for us to be the initiator, um, and not always put all of that, um, duress on him to be the initiator or that, you know, that position for him to be the initiator of, of sex and intimacy and the marriage bed is undefiled. So let's, let's keep it spicy. Let's keep it hot. Um, so, I say all of that to say, um, in the way that you think about the research, um, sex is probably your biggest, your husband's biggest need. Um, so emotionally and physically connecting with him like that is going to, to elevate him just that all that much more. Um, so the frequency is important as well. So, um, I know as women, you know, we like to think of the quality, um, but you know, frequency and quality, they can play effect, play a part, um, especially when you're the initiator. So that makes him more likely in my mind to want to initiate even, um, more or to, to provide the quality that you're looking for when you are willing to provide the quantity that he needs. Um, so, and this think about the other way. Um, when he's constantly denied sex, that's another source of discouragement for him. So, um, you can't have a headache every day. All right. So I know that, you know, I just had to put that in there. It's probably your husband's number one way that he could be encouraged, but I have to put it in there. So, um, the next way that you can, um, be a supporter and love on your husband is to take a genuine interest in you know, in the things that he is interested in. Um, if he likes football, then by all means, I'm not saying sit through a whole game, but you know, make sure he's comfortable or, you know, if you also like sports and there's something that you don't know, then maybe sit down and say, okay, well, you know, what does that mean? You know, first and down, that's what, you know, um, or they put on this time and it was three points, but this time it was only one point. Why? Give him an opportunity to um, explain some things to you and make sure it's a genuine interest, not just to be um, filling a void or filling the conversation with something um, because you heard Tabitha say that this was something to do. Uh, <laughs> but take a, take a genuine interest. You might you might be surprised on how you are actually able to connect with him over that. And that in turn allows him to draw you even closer to him because he's saying she, look, she's interested in that, you know, or, Hey, I didn't even know you like sports. Um, but you know, maybe, maybe it's his favorite team and you just sit down and say, Hey, okay, well, um, even if it's, the opposite of your team, you know, I grew up in Ohio and so the Buckeyes were a big thing. And although I was not a Buckeye, I was actually, you know, since fifth grade, I was always rooting for the underdog. Um, but I became naturally just a, a Michigander or a Wolverine, um, by default kind of. So Ohio state was always beating up on Michigan when I was growing up. And so I think they still do that. Um, my family, total Buckeyes, but anyways, I digress. Um, I said all that to say that even if you have opposite teams that maybe you sit down and, or maybe a player from your favorite college or something like that came from, uh, or is on his team. So just take that interest and get to sit down with him and talk to him a little bit about it. Um, so 
he'll he'll just be interested. I mean, it could be woodwork. It could be whatever he's interested in. You know, maybe ask him to make you a pair of earrings from his woodwork or something to that effect. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, being a bragger and not a nagger. Y'all know how we can do. So not only is nagging toxic, um, but it can also, again, be a, a big discourager. Um, so it's okay to vent to your friends. It's okay to vent to, you know, someone that you're close to that, you know, is going to take that back to prayer. Um, I'm careful to say that we should always be, um, sitting in the council of the godly, um, and not the ungodly or the, you know, unlearned or unwise, um, So I wanted to point out the fact that neurological research suggests that venting and nagging or complaining can actually rewire our thought processes toward more negativity. Who would have thought that? Um, But in other words, negative thoughts and negative self-talk can lead to more negativity. So we want to make sure that we are speaking positively and keep in mind that your words have power. Um, Proverbs teaches us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. So be careful to speak words of love, to speak words of encouragement. And even when you're frustrated to take that to God in prayer and not to, to make that your only conversation. Um, Because again, your words have power. And if your husband isn't there to hear what you're saying, it doesn't matter because we know that, that your words have so much authority that you speak them into the atmosphere and you give life to that. That life can be positive or that life can be negative. So let's try to focus on making it positive. Um, and you know, it's really important too. I want to say this because as we think about our, um, conversation to others about him that also gives an air of respect right because what you say will cause respect to be a factor or an outcome or disrespect you know and that will taint other people's views of him Um, and so you want to make sure that you're being mindful of that the next way that I want to point out as a way that you can love on your spouse is just to never give up on him Um, you know I'll speak from an African-American standpoint, but I venture to say that this goes for all. Um, But I know that our men are up against so much. And so when they go out into the world, into the business sector, um, their job, their career, there's a lot of things that are working um, against them or that they have to face on a daily basis. Um, And so no matter what, it always feels like to him, he has to conquer the world. Um, so he maybe has to conquer for his uh, namesake, right? For his family name, or, you know, um, there are other factors like, you know, loyalty that are out there. He feels like, you know, he'll feel like your loyalty is fickle if you are not in essence, um, standing behind him and, you know, being a supporter, i.e. help me. So, reaffirming him, you know, and building up his confidence, confidence in you. And the fact that when he returns home, it is a sanctuary where he can rest and have peace. Um, and so, you know, tell your husband that you love him. That's another way to encourage him, you know, or just tell him that you appreciate, um, him providing him, you know, making sure that different things are taken care of. If he's the one who handles the finances, make sure that you affirm that, you know, honey, I really appreciate the fact that you've set out a budget and that we're able to meet X, Y, Z financial goals because of the things that you, um, have set in place for the 2020 vision. Your words again, have power. And so make him a better man by speaking life into him and a better husband for you, your family, um, and for anyone else who's watching. So I think that these are just a few ways that I have uh, listed out that, um, I've researched a bit on ways that we can love on our husbands. So I hope that has been helpful to someone. Um, If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I'd love to pray for you regarding such. And so um, as I end, I want to just wrap it up with a word of prayer 
Um, Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, thanking you for the wives. Father, your word says that he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from you, Lord. So I thank you that if they are a wife right now that is um, with a husband now or a wife who is going to be found, Father, I thank you for the joy that you have blessed her with. I thank you for the fact that you've given her entrepreneurial uh, aspirations. I thank you that she is already doing the things that is wifely in nature, Father. But if, first of all, I thank you for each and every woman, each and every listener who will come under the sound of my voice, who is actually in a position or a posture, or even a yearning and desire for marriage, um, whether it be for a wife or whether it be for a, a man who is a um, looking for a wife. I thank you in advance for those spouses that are coming together for kingdom marriage in this year, Lord Jesus. I thank you for every connection, every divine connection, every divine assignment that you will put on marriage, Father. In Jesus' name, I thank you for these women, Lord. Thank you that they have even taken the time, Lord, to hear what you have given me to, to provide to them, Lord. So, Father, without delay, I thank you for blessing them. I thank you for blessing their homes, Lord. I dispatch angels of peace to watch over each and every one of them, Lord. Give them fresh discernment, Father. Give them an increase in their faith, Father, as they go about their day, Father. Lord, I even ask that as Esther prepared herself that you would give these women and men or whomever is listening, Father, give them a desire to prepare themselves, Lord. Lord, whatever it is that they are seeking, Lord, Father, let them also have the mirror before them so that they will be prepared, Lord Jesus. Lord, and in that time that it took for Esther to prepare herself, Lord, it was over a year, your word says, that she would prepare herself with fragrances, Lord. Lord, I pray that you prepare them with a the fragrance of being mindful and good stewards over everything that you've blessed them with from their finances, to their homes, to their vehicles, Father. In Jesus' name, I ask and pray all these things. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for taking this time with me. I appreciate you. God bless you and may you continue to soar 